This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe. Uh, welcome back. So what I'm going to do today, uh, I'd like to talk about multiple time frames. I also like to look at reversal patterns. I think I get a lot of questions about these reversals. And so I want to go back to the one, two, three, but I want to show how it develops. Most of the time, what we're trying to do when we use multiple time frames is use the bigger time frames to tell us when to play the smaller time frames. But when we're looking at a reversal, it's actually the opposite. So I want to get into this and explain that and then, um, uh, we'll, we'll go into the details as well as what to look for with MACD and ADX and how it can help uh, with these reversal signals. Now, if you have an interest in learning more about some of these techniques, I would suggest uh, checking out the book. I'm offering at a discount right now, rablestockresearch.com uh, forward slash book. And also, if you like the content, please hit that like button and also subscribe. Okay, so I've got my four time frames up for uh, XLK. Monthly in the bottom left, weekly, bottom right, uh, daily, upper right, and then an hourly in the upper left, all right? And uh, what I wanted to do here is sort of show how when we're looking at a reversal signal. So, you know, we're, we're looking to see if this time frame is going to reverse because it's kind of the one that's in control. Now, I will say that the last two pullbacks held right at the 18 day right? But when we look at this bigger trend, it's been in place for a long time. Um, we're starting to see a little bit of a slowdown in the momentum. So we're trying to ascertain, is this about to reverse? So what I'm going to do is show how, first of all, we go to the hourly chart. Let's just zoom in on this and show you what's taking place. So just as we made a new high in um, middle of July, uh, we can draw our trend line in we can see that we uh, broke that trend line, but then we pulled back and we went to a, a dramatic new high. OK, so when that happens, I just take this and I draw a new trend line in All right now. If you notice, look at the monster red bar. I, I tell my subscribers this all the time. Monster red bars in many cases can really provide us a lot of insight, especially when added in conjunction to um, something important like the start of a one, two, three. So this is the start of the one, two, three, and it happens on a big red bar. Now that's the one in a change in trend on this time frame. The two would be the test. Now the two, the test can be anything from really a third of a retracement back up, um, all the way up to a minor new high where we, where this would climb up and just, uh, you know, move up to just a marginal degree, uh, above that prior high before turning back down. But in this case, this is kind of your classic lower high retrace about one half to five eighths of, of this decline phase. We re retrace back up and now we work our way back to the downside. Now the three in this pattern is this trend this break so one is the move to the downside two is the test and then three is taking out the low of the decline that started the move all right now if you notice it happened via a gap one of the things i like to do though is to know whether i'm on the right track it is this truly a one two three reversal what we can do is we can pull up the daily chart and make sure that we're breaking the 18 day all right. It, it would be very rare. It does happen, but it's very rare to have a classic one, two, three on the lower time frame and have the higher time frame be above a rising 18. So I, I'm constantly on the look for a one, two, three reversal in one time frame that corresponds to the break of the 18 day. All right. Now, if you notice the way this is playing out, We've gotten a reversal on this time frame that's causing a break of the 18 on this XLK on the daily. Um, and leading up to that move, this made a higher high, but the MACD made a lower high and so did ADX. So we had signs of divergence, momentum divergence, is momentum slowing. We had kind of a nice little red bar as it tried to break out. So if I see a breakout pattern, and then it has one kind of tiny bar and then a big red bar. That's usually a sign that doesn't really want to follow through right now. So anyway, we get that break. Now, if you look at this time frame and we do the same thing, same thing that we were doing back here, you can see that we are now breaking the trend line on this time frame. 
All right. Now, so we start with this one. So it's almost like it rotates this way if we're reversing. All right. If we're looking for a trend play, we kind of want these already moving in the direction we want to play, the direction of the trend, and then look for a pullback on the smaller time frames to play in the direction of these. But when we're looking at a reversal, it's the opposite. We're going to have um, this start to move to the downside with a with a one two three to the downside. Then we'll get a one two three on this time frame. So right now we're only we only have the one. We're gonna need some kind of a retracement test or something. Maybe come back up to the eighteen or something like that. Um, and if it plays out that way and we see that reversal one two three reversal, we're gonna want to watch and see if that corresponds to a break of the eighteen week. All right. Now, if we get the break of the 18 week and we get a move here and we make a one, two, three, then we're going to want to see if that corresponds to a break of the 18 months. Now, I'm getting way ahead of myself because I really don't think that's in play here. I don't think we're going to see, at least not right now. I'm not really, it's not in my head. Now, that could change based on the price action over the course of the next, you know, uh, one to two weeks based on the way this plays out. If the, if the volume really starts to pick up, right now we don't have a lot of volume in this XLK that's telling me we need to get ready for something big. Um, I don't like the fact that the uh, ADX has not confirmed this move. So it does make it, it's it's in play, all right? But we need to see stronger price action if, if that's going to happen, I think. Um, but just these are the types of things I think you want to be on the lookout for, right? If we have a... Um, a move that's been going on for quite some time. So if you go back to the early 2023, this has been up for a long time. What do I talk about is the longevity of a trend. So if a trend has been in place for um, an extended period of time, we always want to be on the lookout for signs of reversal. And again, it's going to start on the smaller time frame and then work its way back down to the lower time frame. Now, uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out is that um, we want to see if we're going to get a reversal pattern on the on this time frame, we typically want to see MACD crossing back down through its zero line. So there should be confirmation from that standpoint. If we're getting that one, two, three, when this crosses to the downside, we want to see the MACD uh, sort of confirming that. All right. And again, it's a um, you can see this reversal coming back to the upside where we crossed above. All right. Now, we did have overrun here. I don't think this really qualifies as a reversal. So we're not using the MACD to determine the reversal. We're using the MACD to support evidence that we have a reversal. OK, I hope that makes sense. So if price is forming a one, two, three, we want to go and see if uh, MACD is confirming that. Um, same thing if we're turning back to the upside, we want to see that confirmation. All right. Now, because of the ADX lag, there's a lot of lag in ADX and at reversals when there's high volatility, big bars cause lag. So when we have lag, we shouldn't really be looking for the ADX to confirm. You see how ADX actually confirmed that peak and it confirmed this low. Red was in charge at the low here and green was at charge at the top here. Now, every now and again, you will get a peak where the ADX dies out, but we can't assume that's going to happen. We have to assume um, if we get that opportunity, then it's a light. I mean, it's like uh, really nodding its head, uh, nodding its cap and giving us a really early warning sign. But many times we will not have that in a reversal signal. All right. So this is the one. This is the reversal off the low and this is the reversal off the top. And neither one of those really gave us any signs on an ADX basis that that was coming. So you have to do your work on a price basis. And many times, most of the time, you'll get confirmation on a MACD basis uh, of that time frame. But your fail safe is to make sure it's happening in conjunction with um, the 18 on the next higher time frame. So if this is happening on an hourly, we're looking at the daily chart and we want to see it breaking that 18 on the next time frame. So these are the kinds of things I would really recommend to be on the lookout for. And I, and I think, you know, watching the XLK uh, is pretty important here. Um, again, I'm not 
really of the opinion that this is just going to fall apart. We might end up getting a correction on the monthly, though, uh, for it to come back closer to the monthly, uh, just based on what's taking place on an ADX basis on the weekly. Um, but we have to follow the shorter term frame frames to know that if this never forms a one, two, three, then we don't have any. We're not looking for any kind of a drop on this time frame. You see what I mean? So we we use this time frame to say, OK, we're getting a drop on this time frame. Now the question becomes, is this going to turn into a consolidation or is this going to reverse and form a one, two, three? If that happens, then we know we've got something a lot more meaningful taking place here based on the fact that the ADX is not confirming. All right. So um, anyway, hope this is uh, helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.